It's the perfect day to fly around in the borderlands in my town clothes. Oh, look at this friendly guy. He wants to run with me. Hey, wait. Hey, hey. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, stop. Ah, ah, move. Get away from me. Get away. Get away. Get away. Get away. Get away. Get away. I'm just. Oh, come on. Really? Really? Oh, a super explosive finisher, too. Great. Howdy folks, my name is Richie aka Bog Otter and welcome to part 2 of a new series designed to help Guild Wars 2 boomerangs. What's a Guild Wars 2 boomerang? Well, it's somebody who's played Guild Wars 2 in the past, took a break of varying length and is now returning to the game and trying to catch up. Now what you missed will vary depending on when you took your breaks, but I will try to be as comprehensive as possible. In the first Guild Wars 2 Boomerang video, which you should check out first if you haven't, I covered updates to the game that would be of interest to all types of players regardless of what type of content they are drawn to. In this video, I'm going to focus on the major changes that have impacted World vs. World specifically since launch. On October 18th, 2013, Season 1 of World vs. World will begin. Each region will be divided into three leagues, Gold, Silver, and Bronze based on their world rating prior to the start of the season. Worlds will face each other world in their league at least once during a seven-week season competing for prizes based on their performance. Each weekly matchup will award the top world with five points, second place with three points, and third place with one point. At the end of the season, worlds will be ranked based on these points, and players who have completed the season-long meta achievement will be given prizes based on their world's ranking. Got all that? No? All right, I'll start over. On October 18, 2013, Season 1 of- All right, all right, it's a joke, it's a joke. So what are the Season 1 rewards? We'll probably know more information about them very soon, but they've mentioned titles, finishing moves, and World vs. World Season chests that are all up for grabs. Oh, one important thing to note, that a player's homeworld is determined at the start of the season and won't change even if you transfer worlds in the middle. So if you're going to jump on the bandwagon of a high population world, you need to do this now. Season 1 will be here soon, but there are scads of other changes to World vs. World that Boomerang should get acquainted with beforehand. But before we dive into the major changes, I want to mention several quality of life improvements. First, when a character disconnects during combat in World vs. World, they still grant rewards to those who were beating the snot out of them, so you can no longer cheese your way out of dying. Siege blueprints are no longer account bound and can be sold on the trading post or mailed to other players. And there was much rejoicing. The Outnumbered buff, which grants you bonuses if your server is greatly outgunned by the opposition, is no longer viewable by your enemies, so yeah, you no longer have to run around with a flashing neon sign that says, KICK ME! Orange swords now only display on the map when groups of 25 people or more attack something, making it a little easier to hide your group's movements. And finally, the scoring interval was changed from 5 to 15 minutes. Now let's jump into the meaty changes. One of the biggest updates to World vs. World is the addition of World Ranks. As you participate in World vs. World, you'll earn World EXP by killing players, killing guards, killing supervisors, killing lords, killing doliacs, destroying siege weapons, destroying gates, destroying walls, basically for killing and destroying. Okay, you also get credit for defending and capturing objectives too, but mostly for killing and destroying. <laughs> As you earn World XP, your rank will increase. Increasing your rank changes the display name that enemies will see. Running around as a rank 1 invader is not likely to inspire the same amount of respect as a rank 540 bronze champion. You also get a reward chest upon ranking up, which includes coins, weapons of various quality, traps, and World XP consumables, which are account bound that can help you rank up your alts. Keep in mind, if you already earned World vs. World ranks before the reward chests were implemented, you'll receive a bonus chest each time you gain a new rank in World vs. World until you're all caught up. Finally, each World vs. World rank awards players with a World Ability Point to be spent on various tracks in a Talent Tree type system. You can spend these points to do more or take less damage against NPC guards and mercenaries, hold more supply, do more damage or take less damage from Siege, build or repair structures more efficiently, or unlock new skills for various types of siege weapons. During the Tequadal Rising patch, a major map update occurred to each of the Borderlands maps. The lakes near the center have been replaced by Ruins of Power, and the Crate and Quaggan living there have been removed entirely. Cool. Quaggan likes you. The Ruins of Power are the spiritual successor of the Orb of Power mechanic that was removed from the game early on. There are five Ruins of Power in each Borderlands map, and if your world manages to capture three of them at the same time, an event will spawn to main control of the three or more Ruins for two minutes. If you're successful, your world will receive a Borderlands Bloodlust buff. 
Say that 10 times fast. The buff grants you and everyone on your world plus 50 to all stats, healing power, and condition damage. In addition, using a finisher on an enemy while under the effects of the buff will award one point to the player's world. This buff can be stacked up to three times if your world controls the ruins in all three Borderlands maps. The buff is not removed until players from an opposing world capture and hold three of the five runes for two minutes and claim the buff for themselves. If a world is allowed to stack the Bloodlust buff, they can quickly improve their world versus world score, even if they are scoring less points per interval for controlling key areas. Were you sick of players farming the Obsidian Sanctum jumping puzzle taking up precious space in the Eternal Battlegrounds? In the Secret of South Sun patch, ArenaNet moved the jumping puzzle to its own world versus world map, so now you control other people doing the puzzle all you want without contributing to longer queue times. World vs. World traps are consumables that last for one hour after they are placed and affect up to 20 nearby enemies when triggered. Traps are sold by World vs. World vendors for 15 badges of honor and 525 karma and they also require 10 supply to deploy. There are two types of traps in the game. The Supply Removal Trap removes 5 supply from enemies while the Stealth Disruptor Trap reveals sneaky foes for 30 seconds. As I mentioned in the last episode, you can spend laurels to purchase ascended rings and amulets, but World vs. World players can snag these goodies for 10 less laurels if they shell out 250 badges of honor as well. You can find the World vs. World laurel vendors in any of the World vs. World staging areas. The cheapest way to get ascended accessories, however, is by doing guild missions, which I'll cover in a future episode. World vs. World specific infusions have also been added, so you get special bonuses by slotting them into your ascended items. These infusions cost 5 laurels and 125 badges of honor, and provide a small stat bonus that will either increase damage to NPC guards, lords, and supervisors, or reduce incoming damage from them. While we're talking about ascended items, I'll mention briefly that ascended weapons are now in the game and can be crafted by anyone who leveled weaponsmithing, artificer, or huntsman crafting disciplines up to level 500. Ascended armor will also be added before the end of 2013. I'll cover this in more detail in a future Boomerang episode. But before we move on from equipment, if you've been gone from Guild Wars 2 for a long time, check out the Badge of Honor vendors as more weapon and armor choices have been added. Now if all these changes haven't convinced you to jump back in and check out what World vs. World has to offer, there have also been a bevy of smaller developments to be aware of, including new World vs. World specific achievements and dailies, updated scoreboard UI, Ooh, shiny. Leaderboards. Breakout events to help you bounce back when your world gets backed into a corner. The removing of culling so you no longer get ambushed by invisible armies. And permanent finishers which can be unlocked on your account to rub your victories into your opponent's face. Yes, in the face! Well that's going to wrap up episode 2 of my Guild Wars 2 Boomerang's Guides for Returning Players World vs. World Edition. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like down below. Favorite it and share it with your friends. Also subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when future videos are released. If you want to contact me, you can hit me up on facebook.com slash or on Twitter at Richie Procopio. Hope everybody has a fantastic day and take care everybody.